I have been importing a whole bunch of elements for Project Life or pocketed scrapbooking. These are actually Project Life elements. I had purchased the digital kits some time ago. Um, and I just wanted to show you how easy it is to do these. These are different packages. They weren't specific Project Life kits. Um, look at this snowflake. I mean, it's just perfect to do. So I'm going to show you. All you do is you click Basic Upload, continue to step one, and then you browse to where you've got your images. And there's that snowflake that I had imported a second ago. Uh, let's see, what do I want here? I mean, it does make sense to bring in images that will work well. Let's bring in this gift box. This will work really well. And I just choose the simple image choice. Continue to step two. In a second, it's going to display my image. I've been doing this for a while, so I guess there's a lot in memory. And look, I have nothing to do with it. When you see this transparent um, texture around your image, you know that this is not selected and this is selected. You can click this eye icon right here and it's going to show you your cut line. And you see that it's perfect. So I continue to step three and I just choose preserve original image within the shape, which is for printing so that my printer will print out that shape and then I'll cut around it with my Explore. And I just save my image. I'm not renaming them because they're already quite descriptive and that will be fine. Let's bring something else in. Um, let's see, what's here? Oh, there's a cute ornament. Let's see how well it does with this part over here. So I'll open that, click simple image, continue to step two, and it will display my image. Now I wouldn't be surprised if it's not able to bring in this part of the image, but it does. Look at that. Okay, so now I'll bring it in and I'll save it. It's able to do that. Let's bring in something else. This is working beautifully. Cricut has really done a fantastic job with this print and print and cut. What is this? It's another snowflake. I'll bring it in just to show you how difficult it was to do the other one. It was really, really difficult. I clicked this button, continue to step two. Now I have to look at it and see. It's perfect. I don't need to do anything. Click the eye and it's going to show you the cut lines. Absolutely perfect. Very exciting stuff. And then I'll save the image. One more. <laughs> it's so much fun. This is easier than any other system I've tried. What is this? That's cute. I'll scroll. What else is here? Well, let's put it to the test. Let's try this image. Should be difficult. Wait for it. And let's see what the eye shows. They're very, very thin lines, but it looks like everything is there. It looks fine. If I zoom in, you should be able to see better. There we go. Look at that. It's perfect. This is fantastic. Continue to step three to save it. There we go. This is beautiful. Look at all these great images. These are all from JPEG files. I'll do it again just so you can see. Actually, were they JPEG or PNG? Just a second. Okay, they were PNGs. Um, what was this one? Okay, no, that's just a composite of everything. Let's bring in this snowflake, this tree. I wonder how it's going to do with the white. There's very little contrast between these. 
Let's see what it does. Okay, and if I click the eye, it's beautiful. All right, I mean, this is fantastic. Look at this. It's bringing it all in perfectly. Very, very nice. Okay, so I said I would show you the differences between a PNG file and a JPEG file and how that affects what happens in design space. Right now you're looking at an image that is a PNG file. And whenever you see this checkerboard pattern behind something, this is in Photoshop now, this checkerboard design means that there is nothing there. Um, wherever there's color, it, there are pixels there. Images are made up of pixels. That's just a technical thing. But where you see the checkerboard, it means that there's no color. That means that there are no pickles. Pickles. <laughs> there are no pixels and there's nothing there. The background is transparent, is what it means. If you change this to a JPEG image by saving as JPEG, you'll see what happens to it. And you'll see it now has a white background behind it. Okay, so now I've opened up the JPEG file as well, and you see that it's got a white background. And if I show you the PNG file, it has this checkerboard pattern, so that's a transparent background. If I show you both of them together, let's see, I'm gonna do two up vertical. You'll see the left is the PNG file and on the right is the JPEG file. So now I'm back in design space and I'm going to import those two images. To do that, I click upload image and this is a basic upload I'll continue to step one. I'm going to browse to go and choose my image, which I believe should be over in here. No, it's actually in the, I think it's the original edition and extra elements. There we go. So here's the JPEG image. I'm going to click simple image. Here again, now you see a checkboard pattern. That means that this area is transparent as well as over here. Here you see the white, which is because of it being a JPEG image. And if I click this image over here, this icon I should say, and then click in the white area of my image, it now makes the background transparent. And this is exactly what I want to bring in so that I'll be able to print and cut this image. So I'll continue to step three and I'll save this and I want to be sure that I have this checkbox checked. It says preserve original image within shape recommended for printing. So I'll click save image and that's now been saved to my library. Now I'm going to upload the PNG file and show you what's different about that. There's a whole lot less work involved in dealing with the PNG file. Uh, now I believe it's this image over here. No, nope, not that one. It would be this one. Okay. So this is a PNG file. And when you bring it in, you'll see you have nothing to do now because the background is already transparent. You don't need to click anywhere to make the background transparent. You can just continue on to step three and save it and you're done. So that's the difference between JPEG and PNG files. If possible, it's nice to have the PNG file. If not, it's a simple matter to get rid of the background in Design Space. It's just that it's less work if you're dealing with the PNG file.